Hi, I'm Scott. I'm here with Postfly. Today we're going to be talking about setting up a dry dropper rig. This is a very good rig to use to kind of cover multiple different uh, aspects of the insect's lifespan. With the dry dropper, what we're essentially looking for when we get to the water is fish hitting on the surface. If we see some fish rising, hitting the surface, we may have a good idea of what kind of insects they are eating. Usually if you look out there, you can kind of see, okay, I see some caddis flying around, I see some mayflies, what they may be interested in. One of the things with trout that can be kind of deceiving sometimes is it may look as though the fish are eating off the surface when a lot of times they're actually eating bugs in the emerger stage. They're coming up and eating bugs right before they get to the surface, but the fish are also breaching the surface, which makes it look like it's actually hitting on the top water part. One way we can kind of dissect that and kind of figure that out is by doing a dry dropper. So normally with a dry dropper, we're going to want a bigger dry fly up top. This larger dry fly is going to not only act as a dry fly itself that the fish might actually strike, but it will also act as an indicator. Well, after that, as we've mentioned already in the uh, advanced nymph rig setup, we're going to add some tippet onto the bottom of this, uh, this dry fly. So what we're going to run here, extra tippet, and then a second fly down below. Essentially making this a nymph rig with a dry fly. It'll double your chances of catching fish, and if the fish strike up top, you catch them there. If they're hitting the emergers or the smaller nymphs down below, you can catch them that way too. So first things first, we've got our dry fly tied on here. You'll also be adding, you'll be dressing it with your floatant. After that, you're going to get your uh, tip it out. Now this can vary very much. Uh, it a lot too depends on how deep the water is while you're fishing, how big of a dropper you're going to put on there, if it has weight, if it's going to be more suspended inside the water column. Usually I'm about two feet, two and a half feet long with the dry droppers. You're going to take that fly, the tippet here, take the fly, tie right onto the hook itself. This too, like I said, you can do this uh, through the front of the fly as well. Most of the time when I'm doing a dry dropper though, I tie right onto the hook itself, right onto the back of the hook. Get your improved clinch knot on there making sure that the hook the tippet does not fall off the hook when you do tighten it down. The other thing that's important when you are tying onto the hook, make sure that you don't catch any of the hair or the feathers that are actually on your dropper. It can really mess up, especially if you're using kind of a forked mayfly style fly, you can really mess up the tail of that fly and that'll kind of ruin your presentation. So make sure you don't have any of the actual fly stuck in your knot. You can leave the tag on for right now. Now we're gonna pick on what we're gonna put onto the bottom part here for our dropper. Like I said, this is something where you can uh, pick up the rocks, see what kind of nymphs are there, check out what kind of insects are, are, are down below and on the bottom. Normally I like to have something that does have kind of a bead head to it, a little bit of weight to get it down a little bit farther. If you're going to be targeting more of that emerger stage of the insect's life, you might, might want something that's going to kind of suspend in the water column and hang almost right below the surface, so something that doesn't have any weight. All right, so now we're going to tie on our bottom fly here, our dropper. There we go. Another improved clinch knot on here. A couple wraps around. Take that tag through. Back through the loop. All right, now we've got our dropper tied on there. We're going to take our nips, we're going to take this, cut these off, cut the tag on your top fly. And now you have your dry dropper set up here. So, as I mentioned before, your top fly. Usually a larger dry fly imitating maybe some insects you've seen flying around. The dry dropper is also another really good one to use in areas where you may have crickets or grasshoppers. Usually kind of a mud field bank that's there. You can use these larger flies up top. You could be casting close to a bank. 
then you can put on your dropper what you might find for nymphs down below. And China's just doubling your chances and really figuring out what the fish are eating down there. So, got our top fly here, got our tippet to our bottom fly. Now, you'll do the same cast that you would for a dry fly with these. Another good one to just check it every once in a while, make sure you didn't get tangled up while you're casting it, make sure the line stretches out nice and far. With this, as I mentioned, a lot of times grasshoppers, crickets, stuff like that along banks, it's a really good place to try this out. Different types of flies too on the bottom, just trying to figure out what the fish are eating down there. So, try a dry dropper, you got a nice sunny day, maybe right at the evening when some fish are popping up, see if you can hook into one.